Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. British summertime. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get started today, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. And most importantly for today's session, uh, the views that are expressed by me today are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. For those of you that are here for the first time today, let me give you a brief introduction to myself. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling at that point. After some early beginner's luck, I wrapped up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case in this game, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit to my capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market, so I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades, or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades. So I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable earning returns since 2008. So 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. And since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels from complete novices former CME floor traders in the development of the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Ticknell clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also uh, provide daily technical trade setup videos for markets that I'm tracking and they're shared through the Tickmill TradingView accounts. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group where I post a daily video outlining my pre-market trade plan for the New York cash trading session of the S&P 500, giving my bias for the day and specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have delivered over 2,500 points of profit since we started the group last April. Second Tickmill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Tickmill Futures Trading Telegram group is a real-time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of cash trading session, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the market and identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and the mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. 
let's jump into the charts. Before we get going here, um, what I would say is that if you have any questions or if you have a chart you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in my deck here, then uh, just drop that into the chat box and I'll, uh, I'll review any questions or chart requests at the end of my presentation. So we're starting with the E-mini S&P 500 and we are testing some pivotal support here at the 3740 area. Now, if we get a break there, and for me, a break is a couple of closes below that level, depending upon which time frame you're looking at. Um, intraday, I'm using five minute and one minute charts. So I'd be looking for a couple of breaks there on those time frames to confirm that. Um, or if you're using 15 minute or hourly charts, just look for a close below there. And that to me is gonna be an opportunity on the short side. And I'm looking for a retest initially of the prior cycle lows into the 3640s. Then as this 3740 acts as resistance, I'm actually looking for price to extend down and looking to test the uh, 3500 level. Note that that 3500 level is the 50% retracement of the entire post pandemic uh, advance. From there, I'd be anticipating uh, at least profit taking or buyers to be stepping in and a more sustained corrective move in this uh, current risk off uh, environment that we are trading in. The NASDAQ, NASDAQ showing some relative strength here. We've had some earnings out this morning from um, JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley, concerns about recession risks and, uh, and credit growth risks are, uh, are the primary concern at the moment. And, uh, and so tech, Tech earnings start next week, so it's on a relative basis, it's holding pretty well at the moment. But for me, the, the key support is this 11,340. Um, as long as we're holding there, then I still see the opportunity for us to test into the 12,479, which is the equality objective versus that swing low. If, however, we take that out again on a closing basis, then I think we, uh, we will be retesting prior cycle lows en route to test into the uh, 10,540, which is the 61.8% retracement of the entire post pandemic advance and the 131 extension from our swing high here up at uh, 15,264. We are still just clinging on to the equality objective and the 50% retracement at the moment, but um, I'm anticipating as we head into next week, that we're going to see some uh, some pretty dire forecasts from some of these tech behemoths. And, uh, and I'm, I would anticipate we do get down and test into this support zone. Dow Jones breaking down. So the Dow is actually taking out its support here at the 30,300 level. So what I'm anticipating is a move back to test the price cycle lows, 29,600s. But ultimately, I'm looking for a move now down to test into this uh, descent, potential descending wedge support coming in uh, just below 29,000. From there again, as long as we maintain um, this momentum divergence that we have in play here, then any bullish reversal patterns from this area, you can certainly look on the intraday four hour charts, but uh, for me, it would be a daily reversal I'd be looking for, um, then should set up another leg of corrective upside back into the descending wedge resistance at 30,000, just below 30,500. Um, on the bullish side of things, it would really take a, a reversal today, a key reversal pattern, so to totally erase the, uh, the losses of the day and close at highs to suggest we could see further upside here, but looking uh, less probable at this stage, given the, uh, the downside move that we're seeing at the moment. Russell, this is the only US index that hasn't tested its equality objective. And uh, as mentioned before, this 1579 coincides with the weekly high volume node as well. So if we take out the support pivot here at 1678, I'm gonna be looking to be short, targeting that move down. Let's see, uh, targeting that move down into the 1570s as the, uh, the downside objective. Could see, again, as long as we maintain momentum divergence here, I'm anticipating that that area will at least see some profit taking. And so there's a potential there to play a, a counter trend long 
and, uh, and certainly we can think about a test of this trend channel resistance coming in somewhere around 1810 as, uh, as a target there once, uh, once we test that quality objective. DAX rolling over and um, any loss of this uh, high volume load on a closing basis. So through 12,300, then it's, uh, it's time to be short the DAX and we have an equality objective below us at 11,129, coincides with 61.8% retracement again of that post-pandemic advance. So these are, these are key targets to the downside. Um, once we take out the, the current lows here, it, uh, it's starting to look uh, like we're gonna roll over. Nikkei, the Nikkei is the one chart that has been holding up, although we are seeing a bit of weakness now. Um, still trading above its uh, weekly trend line support. But for me, any loss of the 25,500 area, and, uh, and we have a downside equality objective cited at 22,565. And, uh, and I can't see that the Nikkei is going to hold up uh, if these other, if the major US indexes are, uh, are going to roll over here. And so we come to the wrecking ball, the dollar. This strength is, uh, is really what's driving most of the moves that we're seeing in markets at the moment. So we look now for 108.70s to get tested with weekly projected range uh, resistance, sorry, just above there, 108.80s. Um, potential there that we see at least a, a pullback, but certainly any moves now back into this uh, 106.50s, I'd be a buyer and um, the ultimate Upside objective here is this monthly uh, trend line resistance that comes in just below the 114 level. And you've got to think that if we're up in that area, then um, the Fed are going to be concerned about this dollar strength having broader ramifications for the market. So uh, let's see how, uh, how this develops. Um, the euro dollar, obviously, parity watch has, uh, has been the talk of the markets this week. Um, any move <clears throat> back below uh, and into this 99.29, we've got the descending trend line support coinciding with weekly projected range support. So this could be an area it will obviously have to watch because we're not uh, we're not getting confirmation here from the momentum. Momentum is actually breaking down, but we could see a corrective move from uh, a test here down into that 99.20s. Um, and what I would be anticipating is if we get this scenario here, so we look for an equal leg. Actually, I'm going to redraw this. So we're tracking what, what I'm basically what I'm looking at here is that the potential for a five wave move to the downside to complete like this. So what we're always looking for is we want wave four a symmetry type swing. But, uh, and then we look for a five, wave five to equal at a minimum wave one. So we can see now how this sets up. If we hold into this support zone and any move back into the 101.10, uh, 101.20 area, I would anticipate you see sellers there. And we've got a downside target then uh, that we can uh, measure in terms of the minimum measured move, which would take us into this 9690s. And then from there, we would anticipate another corrective leg and we can think about something similar in scope and scale to what we saw before this breakdown that we are currently witnessing. Also got the yearly S3 coming in 9760s. So um, that would be a target zone if, uh, if we do get a bounce here and then something to sell into. Sterling also weak. We have a wedge pattern developing here. Look for if we if we roll over today. We're currently we're trading we just managing to hold on to this 118 handle. Um, but any move into the trend line resistance here or the wedge resistance, let me just sharpen that up. Um, so we look for any move into the just above the 120 handle. Watch for bearish reverse buttons there to get in on the short side and target a test down into. 116.50s. And then again, from there, we'd look for a, uh, a corrective bounce to develop. Dollar yen surging, testing the ascending trend line resistance now. So 
let's see how uh, how price responds up here. But ultimately, now I think uh, trading at one thirty eight ninety is I think one forty becomes the magnet on the upside. But um, any loss of this ascending uh, trend line support back through one thirty six ninety fives, I think we can get a move back into test support at the one thirty two. Ten year yields. Obviously, inflation running really hot in the US. Um, 40 year highs continuing to, uh, to be printed there. And, uh, and the 10 year yield is still hovering just below this 3% uh, level. Any move back into 3.19%, uh, I think we'll, we can see sellers stepping in there. And ultimately, I'm looking for a test back into the 2.5% level. Euro yen finding some resistance here as it comes back to recheck the underside of the prior trend line support to act as resistance. I'm looking for another leg lower here in Euro yen. So any move back through the 136.90s, I want to be in on the short side and I'm looking for a move down into the 133.30s as the downside objective for Euro yen. Um, from there, I would anticipate we could see a buyer stepping back in and looking for a move higher once again. Sterling Yen, I'm looking for us to test. I posted uh, charts on the TradingView account earlier. Um, I'm looking for a move into test 165.80s, this descending trend line resistance. I'll just show you on a four hour view here, how I'm looking at this. So what we want, what I'm looking for here is a test of the quality objective. So we have Swing, swing low, and you can see that we have an equal legs objective. Let me just remove that and I'll show you exactly where it is. I'm thinking of. So, again, a bit of a pause here as we test that 165. So, what I'd like to see is something like this set up now, and then we get that pop into that trend line resistance, the equality objective, with a high volume mode just above there just below 166. So I've watched for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. And certainly we think about a retest of the high volume node here, 163.20. So that's uh, that's a trade that I'm actively tracking at the moment. I'll switch it back to the daily view. <clears throat> I don't think we've got anything in this Aussie yen. No. CAD yen. Seeing some resistance again here, struggling to get a close above that 106.70 handle and uh, I'm getting an outside reversal or a, sorry, pin bar reversal set up here. So if this closes at or below current levels, then uh, I'm going to be looking on the short side here in terms of the CAD yen and we can think about a move back into test 102, 101.90s as the downside objective there for the CAD yen. Kiwi Yen testing the high volume node here. Um, really, I'd want to see a break of support 80, at the 83 handle to consider short positions, then down to target the ascending trend line support coming in 79.50s. Dollar CAD breaking to the upside as we anticipated. So we're getting close now to our target zone here, 132. 132.04 is the equality objective. We have the high volume mode just above there, 132.80. So we're going to be watching on the daily time frame here for potential bearish reversal patterns to get in on the short side. And we'd be certainly thinking about a retest of the 129 handle from above as the um, first downside target for that, uh, for that opportunity. So paying close attention to that one. The Aussie getting close to our um, weekly Quality objective 6650. So again, watching for momentum divergence to be maintained and a breakdown into that area to uh, engage on the long side. Certainly, we think about a test of trend line resistance coming back in into the 69 handle area. So keeping an eye on these some of these commodity currencies looking interesting as we're testing some key levels. Uh, Kiwi <coughs> dollar Kiwi broke its support area. So I'm looking for a 60 test there for uh, dollar kiwi and again as long as we maintain momentum divergence which we, is developing nicely here and i see the opportunity for counter trend trades uh, developing in these, uh, these commodity, commodity currencies 
Let's take a look at the metals. Gold, we are targeting 1670 in gold. This is a, a, a setup I'm paying close attention to um, because I see an opportunity here. Um, if we just you know, take out this, or we just dip below this support here at 1675 and so get that 1660 test uh, and we hold. And once those stops have been taken out, if we get a key day reversal pattern, then I'm gonna be looking to get in on the long side uh, for gold and certainly thinking about a test of a high volume low back up to 1793 but we could have a more meaningful low in place here with gold it could be a pretty significant opportunity if it sets up and uh, we could be back up retesting and breaking highs as this would complete a, uh, a major wave for low here so keep your eye on gold um silver is testing its equality objective at, as we speak here 1848 We've got, sorry, $18.48. 1790 is the weekly high volume lows and that, uh, that descending trend line support there. So again, keep an eye on, uh, on silver here because I see uh, at least the potential for a correction to the upside. And we again target high volume over there, $22.35. But uh, testing some key levels here. Crude oil. It's broken down. I'm nothing to do in crude yet, but what I am watching very closely is this 8630 area. We've got the confluence of a couple of um, quality objectives lining up there, and, uh, and we've got this ascending trend line support as well. So, any move back into that area, bullish reversal patterns on the daily time frame for me, and I've been looking to engage on the long side in terms of uh, crude oil. Now, let's take a look at the crypto meltdown. We, uh, we are looking for the quality objective that comes in at 12,000 on Bitcoin. And so any loss of the current lows, just below 18,000, I just, is a short opportunity for me. And uh, I'm targeting 12,000 on the downside uh, for Bitcoin, Ether, Holding up, you can see here that on the weekly scale, that 1000 level, that gives way. And we have uh, the quality objective below us, 851 for Ether. So again, any loss in terms of that support zone want to be on the short side, targeting the equality objective below us. And so those are the charts that I'm, uh, I'm tracking at the moment, guys. The, uh, the equity space obviously has, uh, has most of my interest at this stage because I see opportunities potentially developing here for a rollover and, uh, and we get to test of some pretty uh, chunky downside objectives in, uh, in coming sessions. One thing to be, again, one thing to be cognizant of is that we are heading into the, uh, the meat of the earnings season over the coming weeks. And I believe that we will start to see a theme developing with respect to consumer spending, certainly ta tapering off significantly in the US. The economy in the US is driven 70% by consumer spending. And so as that starts to taper off, I see weakness coming for, uh, for these markets. And I think we will uh, we'll be trading lower. Um, and we also have uh, the Fed now pricing in a, a potential for a 1% uh, move in coming meetings, historic uh, shift there. So that also could be a driver of uh, further concern uh, for these markets to the downside. Okay, with that said, are there any questions? So would anyone like me to take a look at a chart that I haven't covered? Happy to give you a view. Um, equally, if you uh, want to take a look at the... Um, Futures group, the S&P group, where I post that daily uh, setup chart, uh, setup video. I'm just going to post the link here in the chat. You're welcome to just uh, request access, and uh, and I'll get you uh, get you in there, and you can uh, follow along with the S&P 500 setups on a daily basis. I'll also just post the Trading View accounts for those who want to follow along with those daily trade videos. Put that link in there and can't see any questions coming through so i will uh, i'll wrap this session up here uh, thanks very much everyone and as always traders plan the trade trade the plan and most importantly manage your risk until next week thanks very much